it is a very simple program. It's not necessarily clean or nice, um, but I think it probably took like a minute or two, yeah, um, which is really convenient. It's so hard um, to beat fast. Hey guys, welcome to Embedded Toolbox, the video interview series where we try to save the world by solving one engineering challenge at a time. And today's engineering challenge is making programming more easy and efficient and streamlined and doing that through graphical programming. To do that, we've brought on David Prita, who's a solutions marketer at NI. How you doing, David? Hey, Brandon, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So you heard it, you know, graphical programming, that's uh, obviously makes things a little bit easier. And for engineers who are trying to get to market quickly and under budget, uh, that's the name of the game. Of course, they've been doing that for decades using NI's LabVIEW. Why has NI's LabVIEW been so successful for so long with so many engineers? Uh, at its core, LabVIEW is a graphical programming environment. So um, it really allows engineers to develop a lot quicker. You don't have to worry about a lot of the syntax and complication that's involved with programming. Um, everything's really built in. You can just drag and drop and uh, kind of code really quickly. Um, I think you know, one of the main things that people come to LabVIEW for uh, time and time again is really the ability and ease to connect to hardware. So whether you're connecting with an NI device or a third-party device, you'll be able to connect to it really quickly. There are thousands of drivers available. So it just makes that process a lot quicker. What can we expect from this latest version? Yeah. So uh, in the latest release, 2023 Q1, we've added uh, support for Python virtual environments. That's one of our big new features. So, you know, right now Python is very big, very popular. And since 2017 or 2018, I think we've been adding more and more Python functionality. So this release, we're getting a little bit closer and a little bit better with virtual environment support. I think we're also supporting Python 3.10. We've also recently formed a partnership with JKI. So we're, built, we're bringing more VIPM features. So that'll be really helpful when you're building packages and sharing code with your team members. And we're also making some of the installation and other things a little bit easier as well. Over the next few episodes of Embedded Toolbox, we're going to be diving into some of those features. But David, today, you're going to just help us get up and running. So can you tell us what you're going to show us today before we dive in? In this one, we'll be uh, just doing a very quick temperature measurement. So, you know, you may be doing a thermal chamber test or some other measurement, and this could just be any measurement. I'm doing temperature because that's what I like to do, but you can do anything. So uh, we'll just be really quickly setting that up and uh, creating like a chart and a graph to view that all. So if you're familiar with LabVIEW, here's our front panel and block diagram. Our front panel is where we have our tradition, is where we have our UI. So you'll be able to see and view your data as well as control your test if you wanted to. And then our block diagram here on the right is where we do our more traditional coding and uh, development. Uh, if I start here on the block diagram and right click, we can see sort of our functional palette. We're gonna be doing um, a temperature measurement. So I'm gonna go down to measurement IO and I'm gonna scroll to the NI DACMX. That's the driver for our hardware. So I have a CDAC 9174 with a 9213 temperature input module and a thermocouple uh, right there. So these um, are actually actually real measurements we're gonna be taking. It's real, it's real, I promise. <laughs> no vaporware. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead, drag and drop this right here. So we have our create task. Um, we have a start task, a read task, cause we're gonna be reading in data, a stop task, and a clear task. Um, this follows like our very traditional LabVIEW programming. So it's like create, do, and then clear. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and wire that all together really quickly. I'm just gonna wire some of the air stuff together too. So it takes a second. Um, <laughs> it takes a second, but it's a lot faster than the alternative, right? <laughs> yeah, and I'm not using a mouse, so we're <laughs> <laughs> um, But here, so we have it set up. It's defaulted to an analog input voltage. Uh, we're going to go ahead and change that to a temperature measurement, which is thermocouple. Um, and then we're going to select the actual uh, devices that we want. You can do it as a constant or a control. The constant will just you know, set it on the block diagram and it'll never change. Or you can do it as a control where it'll appear on our front panel. Um, and our devices may change or something. So I'm going to create it as a control. Um, we can also do so for the units. Uh, 
So I'll go ahead and create that. Then we have our cold junction source. I'll create that as another, uh, I create that one as a constant. Uh, so that's what it looked like and it appears right there. And then we also have our thermal couple type. So with a temperature measurement, there are a few more things that you kind of have to set up. Um, but you see, I like created those controls and then they kind of auto-populated on the front panel over here on the left. Um, I also want to be able to see the data that we're going to be taking. So I'm going to go ahead and create an indicator. And that also appeared uh, right here uh, on the front panel. I'm going to go ahead and select the channel and I'll input zero. I'm going to change the units to Fahrenheit and the thermocouple type to K. Um, and if I wanted to like modify or move anything around, I could drag it, drop it, resize it. Um, change the name to temperature, you know, make it really friendly to myself. Um, but this is really it. And now we can just take the temperature measurement really quickly. Um, and you see here, it's about 69 degrees. So if I were to hold it, um, it's now like 82 degrees. I'm like holding it right there. Um, so you saw it got a little bit warmer. Um, and so that's like how you'd really quickly build it. Um, if we wanted to continuously monitor the temperature, we could drop in a while loop really yeah. quickly. Um, so I'm going to go back to my functional palette and see the structures for a while loop. And I can just drop that right over the read task. And then uh, you need to set a condition. So you can set a condition or a button. Uh, so I'm just going to create a stop button and that got automatically placed right there on uh, the front panel. What if we wanted to do something like bring in another signal as well? I have here also an accelerometer, which I'm going to plug in right now, um, as well as the temperature that I set up from before. Um, so what's really convenient here is, you know, we have all of our entire system. Um, set up and we're able to see it. So this is the front panel or the block diagram for that one. Um, it's, you know, pretty similar, a little, you know, just a little bit more stuff. So we have uh, the stuff for the accelerometer up above here and uh, the thermocouple, which we were doing down below. So I'm just gonna set up the devices really quickly. And then I can just go ahead and hit run once again, and we can see sort of both of those. And if I like jiggle the accelerometer, um, it'll start to go. Um, and then you can also change the scale. So I think for this one, it needs to be like 0.01. Um, and then you'll see as I shake it and stuff. And so, yeah, you, what's really, I mean, you're seeing all this stuff on one screen. It's really convenient if I wanted to change anything. Um, I could do it here, stop, continue, whatever I wanted. So it's all really convenient. Um, I think it has all, all of your data in one place. Well, that was lightning fast, David. Thanks so much for that. Um, of course. Obviously, as we mentioned, you know, a lot of the things that we were showing here didn't really reflect what's new in LabVIEW, but we mm -hmm. are going to be touching on a lot of that stuff in the subsequent episodes, particularly, as you mentioned, with Python and the virtual environments there. What can we expect out of the next one? Yeah, so my teammate Austin will be joining and he'll be showing what it's like to integrate Python into LabVIEW. Um, so I think he's going to be doing some data analysis in Python that's really popular. Um, so he'll be showing how to use that and also integrate and use a virtual environment. So for those of us who are super interested in LabVIEW, the newest version, um, where can we go to find more information? Yeah, definitely go to ni.com slash LabVIEW, um, or you can also just Google LabVIEW download if you want to try LabVIEW. Um, it, we have more information at the bottom of the page on ni.com slash LabVIEW, um, where you can see all the new features and everything. And then, great, great. Well, thanks so much. And uh, we really enjoyed it. I hope to have you back on sometime. Thanks. Look forward to it.